a patient is a patient, whether they're a dog or a person. And for me, when someone brings me their dog, they're bringing them to me because they're a family member. Come here, Porter. For Andy and Maggie Nook, that family member was Porter, their eight-year-old black lab who developed a large oral mass that was quickly growing. The tumor had gotten actually large enough that it was interfering with his ability to eat. And he was also drooling a lot and was had a, a lot of discomfort. What we did is we offered them standard of care, but we also had a clinical trial going on. The Nooks jumped at the chance to enroll Porter in a trial that could identify a drug to help their four-legged family member, knowing it could someday help benefit human cancer patients too. The possibilities, the probability that we have a spontaneously arising disorder in our veterinary patients that can be used as a model for human disease is very high. Porter was given a drug to help oxygenate his tumor with the hope of improving local radiation treatment and changing the tumor microenvironment. Doctors say if it works for Porter, it could potentially work for humans. The diseases that we see, the disorders that we see, often mimic very closely the human counterparts in virtually every specialty area. With veterinary patients, doctors can answer specific questions about the mechanism of the disease and the efficacy of a drug. They can do it easier and faster than they do in human patients, and they often have a larger pool of patients available. We see about 50,000 patients annually here in a variety of specialty areas, all the specialties that you might find in a referral human hospital. The veterinary clinical patient population is an underutilized resource in terms of exploring ways to accelerate and improve the predictive value of findings in the development of therapeutics for the human population. I think it's an opportunity to much, get much faster acceleration of trials, new tests, new medications, simply new ways of thinking about treatment in humans that we learn from this synergy with animals. The Comprehensive Cancer Center at UC Davis Health includes a comparative oncology program. Dr. Kent is one of its leaders. It's the only one of the NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Centers that actually has recognized comparative oncology by creating a whole program around it. He says comparative oncology could lead to discoveries that would save lives by bringing together the brightest minds in human and veterinary medicine at UC Davis. Doctors who may work on different sides of the causeway, but they carry the same mission. Everyone wants a world that's cancer-free, where cancer is no longer kills or at least becomes a manageable chronic disease. We have to use every tool that we have in order to achieve that. If I can learn from my patients and help my patients and use that to help inform trials that are going to go on to help people, it's a win-win. That's how we're going to cure cancer. It's not coming tomorrow, but it's, it's going to happen and it's going to be one step at a time.